you can see, we've got those four rollers in the camera. What I have is a very short piece of leftover leather. So what we do is just do a whole row of them. So for this demonstration, I'm going to do these four. So I've got this piece of leather, I've put a point on it at one end, and it's just a matter of threading that into the hole and pulling it through. And then with some sharp side cutters that don't appear to be here, You trim it off. Now I'm not going back to the uh, workshop in the house, so I'm going to use these scissors. That's one. And the next one. Now the wholesalers have sent me the invoice for all the parts we've ordered. So that tells me they're in the post. And that therefore tells me we may get them tomorrow. And we may be able to finish that sandboard off and put it on that building frame and get some real headway. So it's actually not that difficult, it's just a bit monotonous when you've got 112 to do. That's just, I've managed to pull that too far through. I should be able to pull a bit back. I'll just do a, a few more until I run out of this piece and then we'll cut a bit more. I've started with a really small piece of leather which was left over from the bellows gussets. May as well use it up like that. In fact when I did my apprenticeship at Groves Orton Bills at Nottingham I never even remember ever buying any bushing leather, it was always left over from some other job like this. Okay, so that's as far as we're going to go with, with that piece. Now I have some bushing pliers here. So I'll try and show you these. So these are You'll notice they're wet because they've just come out of the hot water. These are one of those, get with a Japanese car, try and get it in the view, find it. It says Nissan on it. So we've got the Datsun pliers, and I've turned these into bushing pliers. We did this in the 90s. So you'll see we've actually drilled, just get in the, a countersunk, countersink. Let's get the light right and in the viewfinder right and a hole through and on the other side of the jaw so then we've got this pin which is 14 gauge which goes in there and is pointed at one end so it now looks get that in view like that. So what happens is I'm going to put a dab of the animal glue on and then these go, these are applied with hot water and you'll see what I do next. So I've just got to wait for the glue to warm up a bit so we'll come back in 10 minutes. 
Right, never seen that on camera before. Let's try doing this. So I've got my glue here. So I'm gonna put a dab of this. I need a smaller brush to be honest, but put some on there. Two, three, four, five, we'll do six. I think I can do six quickly enough for it not to go off. So I've got some a bowl of near boiling water. So I'm just getting my bushing pliers ready. Background music's playing electronic organ music. I'll try and work round this. Oh, I've gone and lost my pin. You can't have this pin captive, otherwise it won't, it's not going to work. It's not actually as awkward as this, but I make a bit of a meal of it with the camera being here. I to get the pin to go in. So what I'm now doing, as a, with the pliers tight, and now that is in, I'm going to pull the pin back out, to do the next one. This leather's a bit thicker than I was expecting. So there we are, that's uh, three of them bushed. Well folks, I'm back onto this soundboard. The parts have arrived after five weeks. So we've got a set of 56 pull downs. So they're a wire with a nylon eye. So it saves doing all that bushing and it just looks a bit better when you've got 56 of them. Now I didn't know what spring to order, so I've ordered, we've got a couple of springs if you remember had broken, I've ordered 17 gauge, 18 gauge and 16 gauge. So we'll get the micrometer on those and we'll sort that out. So put those on one side and let's see what we have to do with these because they all have to be bent and cut. We're going to start in the middle because it's going to be easy to demonstrate. So these go through like that. But first of all, was that on camera? No, not at all. We've got aeroplanes overhead. So I've inserted that. Let's insert it in another one. But of course they're, they're too long, aren't they? So let's see what we've got to do inside. I'll wind down the tripod. Right, so if I can do one which is where the camera is, the camera's there, so if I do that one, we want all these to be the same size. So once I've, I've done one, I'll bend a whole pile of them the right length. 
to be honest, I can just pull that through, can't I? This first one. So I want that to be, if I just move the camera up again, I want that so that it doesn't get knocked. That's what that's guarding against. So I want it to be there and the inside of it needs to go down through that bushed eye. So it needs to be about that long. I, I, do you like the accuracy? About that long. Yes, I think that's about where we want it. But I've bent it in the wrong angle. I want the eye to be there, but I want the bend to be 90 degrees to where I've put it. So that's gonna be fun, I'll have to twist that round. I won't be able to get that back out either. So that's, Today's first error. I'll just tell you what, we'll just cut this excess off. Now, I'll use those for something else, of course. I'm not going to waste any material. There are lots of aeroplanes flying overhead today. So let's try again. Now that's too high. So once, um, once I've got one right, it'll be quicker than you think to do them all. So that's too high, so that's not going to work out. So it needs to be that much lower. Let's try another bend just there. So my first one's trial and error. Bend that back again. May as well cut that excess off. bent in situ, but I've got a bit of an angle on it, as, as hopefully you can see. Yeah. So now I'll put the bend in, shall we say properly. Cut some of that excess off. Put that through the eye and let's hope we're in the right place this time. We are. So I'm holding onto the pallet. And at the same time, we need to bend that round the eye, but not so that it's stupidly tight. And there we are, we've got our first one. Let's just widen the shot. Our first one's actually in. So using the jig now, let's move the camera down so you can see what I'm up to. So we've discovered that this piece of floorboard is just right to know where that bend needs to be. So I've pulled that bend in, we can cut the excess off. 
So we'll use that for something else. And hopefully this will thread through quite quickly. There's 56 of those to do. I'm gonna do 12 this evening. No, I didn't get the, uh, I've, I've still done it wrongly. It needs to be right angles. Try again. Imagine doing this in situ and not part of it as a major overhaul. go. Right, let's try the next one, see whether we can get the first, this to be right first time. So we know it's there on the piece of wood. So I need to just turn the eye around, put my first bend in there. Put a bit more of a bend in. Cut the excess off. Thread it through, get the pliers in there. And hopefully get it through the eye like that. that bit a bit tighter. Right, we'll do the next one and then we'll take it off camera. So once again, we'll measure it on the piece of wood. We we'll want it at right angles. Just increase that bend a bit with the pliers. Cut the excess off, thread it through, put the proper bend in, thread it through the eye, bend it upwards, I've got very strong fingers you'll probably realise. I'll just finish it off with the pliers got our next one. So that's what we have for each of those and then of course they will just pull down bearing in mind this is upside down. There we have it so that will do for now. So the next day I did 33 yesterday and 23 this morning it's still half past eight I've been an hour on it so I spent a couple of hours in total of course the most difficult one was the one I showed you where you're actually setting up yourself to to do them all and you've got that little bit of trial and error but uh, once you've done the first one we set up that piece of uh, timber as a jig and they're all more or less the same so hopefully they're all pointing in the same direction we'll just look at that so there we go that's the nylon bushings so the next thing is the spring now if you remember in fact I can move that camera just there We've got those two broken springs. So I didn't know whether there were 16, 17 or 18 gauge. So I ordered a couple of each. They're only like 85 pence each. So it wasn't, the, it wasn't a big deal to not bother coming in here to check. So we'll get the Aldi micrometer and we'll actually measure what they are. So it's 1.7 millimetre, whatever that relates to. Let's start with 18.
1.2. So let's go to 16 gauge. One point five eight, so that's going to be the nearest. I just wanted it to fit in the holes and the grooves properly. It's not the strength because we're going to set that right now. Now, I would think that the brass springs are weaker than these steel ones, and I need my round nose pliers to adjust these. I'll just get them. One of the snags working in here is I've got the organ workshop next door with most of the tools in it. We've then got a lean-to um, wooden workshop and that's got some of the tools in it and, and then some of them are here. So I'm just going to strengthen that up. Now that is less strong than how we had it. Just make sure, yes, that's in the viewfinder. That's less strong than how we had it. So I need to check. We, we did a little thing with a, with a weighing scale with one of the springs. So I'll just move the camera. So having selected our spring, I've just taken one out. I should have kept one back, but I didn't. And I just want to check the weight. So this is an existing spring. Trying to get that to stay put on that glass surface isn't going to be easy. So that read 236. Let's just try it again. Two hundred and fifty. So here's the new spring. Four hundred. So I'm going to have to back this off a bit. And we're going to have a note that's heavier. Con you know, considerably heavier. That could catch an organist out. Certainly, could catch me out. Three hundred and thirty. Just knock a little bit more off that. I don't mind it being a little bit stronger. Three hundred and twenty. Well, that'll do me. So I'll put that spring in, and we'll do the other sixteen gauge one at the same time. I'll just see how it comes out of the packet. Two hundred and forty. I do want that to be up a fraction. So let's go back to the original one whilst it's all in the same position. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll do it so it's over the edge like that. So that's one eight three. So do this one over the edge as well, exactly the same. 230. We'll do this one just the same. 190. Right, that'll do. So the 190 I'll put in one of the higher notes, and the 230 I'll put in one of the lower notes. 
Okay, after all those weeks doing the soundboard, it's now on top of the building frame ready. Now normally we'd put the swell box up, but because it's been repalleted, what we're going to do is we're going to wind it up. So I'm going to put the trunking which goes in on the right. We'll connect the um, control valve and uh, bellows and all that up and we will see whether any of those are leaking because the worst thing we what you don't want to do is put lots of organ together and find out there's a note permanently sounding because there's a a problem i know it's a lot of work to take it down again and strip it down to find out what's wrong which is why you have to work on them meticulously but things can go wrong and i'd rather fix it at this stage if there's a problem we've got the face board off at the moment so you can still see the works and that will of course have to go on but first of all we're going to wind it up and then if there is any dust in there which has been missed by the vacuum cleaner it's going to have the opportunity to blow out and not get stuck under those pallets. Right, we've now connected the control valve and the inlet from the blower to the bellows. The bellows has been screwed down and that's quite, I had to take the weights off because I had to manipulate the bellows backwards and forwards and the, the frame was very slightly out of square as well. We discovered that when we tried to put the sandboard on because it goes into the dowling pegs. So if we look at the other end, I've just taken the uh, plate off the bellows. That's the trunk which I've eventually found. And I've taken the plate off the bellows there. So what we're going to do is we're going to wind it up for the first time and despite me having vacuumed inside of that bellows, I bet some pile of stuff flies out and of course I want it to fly out into the room rather than fly out into that soundboard that I've just rebuilt. bellows can't rise with that massive hole in it so I don't know whether anything came out but uh, that was precautionary. So now I'm going to put the trunk on but I can only find three screws, the two inch 14s. Uh, I don't know why that is, perhaps most of them were broken. So I'm going to have to order some screws but of course two screws prove what I'm needing to do. There we go, now I'll put the wind on again. Now the screws for the face board, which I could put on, but I'm, I don't want to be walking on that bellows. I am too heavy at 18 and a half stone. Um, don't want to risk damaging the ribs. Not so much the top, it's the ribs. So, um, I'm just gonna wait for a pair of uh, builder's trestles to be ordered so we can put scaffold boards just about an inch over the top of the bellows so I can safely walk on there and fit the trackers to the rollerboard which we'll be putting in shortly. The other thing which we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting in the slides and the upper boards. You don't normally do this at this stage, you would put the swell box up next. But just in case there's any error on those pallets, what I don't want to do is to put the swell box up and then discover we've got one note playing all on its own. Or 20 working all on their own. So the idea is to put the face boards on, put the slides on, put the upper boards on and I'm going to get out the four foot, um, is it gems horn on this, something like that and actually put the rack boards in and fit the pipes and then put them away again. But they will have been cleaned and it will be a step forward and then we'll put the swell box up because if that's got to come down uh, I want to do it now and not when the organ's been put together a lot more. So that's where we are at the moment and let's see how much more I can get on with. So when I look at the faceboard screws, they're a bit of a hodgepodge of different sizes and this of course can happen over such a period of time and when the organ's been moved a number of times. So I would think the sh we started off with the shorter ones and as they've stripped, they've ended up with the longer ones. What I don't want to do 
I used to have different sizes in a face board. That's poor. That's a real poor show. But we've got two sizes. I mean, if it was like they were all the tops were one size and all the bottoms were another, but it won't be like that. Okay, so we're outside on one of the outside benches. And this is a sandwich of upper boards and slides. It's correct practice when you transport slides to sandwich them between upper boards so they don't get broken. So I think that these could be for the swell, but I've four sandwiches like that. And it could be it could be either. So we'll cut the string and we're going to get some hot water on these in a rag. I've still got some flash. I haven't made this for ages. And it, um, with it being a powder, it just seems to work better for me on this application. With two half boxes like that. Right, so if I manage to break that string or cut it, extract the slides. Now that's clearly going to be one of the swell ones. I'm absolutely sure because your base notes, there aren't any. Base notes are in the middle, so that's going to be one of the two stops in the swell that ends at Tennessee. It's probably even the 16 foot. So we'll be dusting that off with a duster and then we'll be touching up the black lead, which I'll also talk to you about. I think we've done black lead before. Just get these out of the way. So they're lubricated with the black lead, which is a graphite suspended in methylated spirit, because they're sliding between wooden surfaces. And they correspond with the holes here. So that's going to be one of the swell ones because it's not got the full scale. I think that looks like it's off the grade. We'll put that to one side. Because the grate doesn't start off with the base in the middle and the swell does, so I can tell. So we'll see whether this water is far too hot to handle. The answer is yes. Now these were dusted off in the church. Try not to bring... Well, they'll be dusted off outside the church. We don't dust them. So we do, we do go in there with the vacuum cleaner. There is some writing on the end. So you get the gist. Stop the camera, some candle fat there from the days when people tuned it by candlelight. Right, I've dug the, that's been cleaned as you can tell. So now we'll just turn it over the other way. And some grease there. I've got an off cut of felt here. I'll use this to apply the black lead.
Although there aren't any bits missing, when doing such a big overhaul, it's obvious that you do things like this at the same time. I'll have to find the other one of these because there'll be two for the swell with the being four stops. We do the same with the slides. catching along that edge at some point. So when you tighten the upper balls down and make this sandwich, it's a compromise really because you don't want it um, so tight that the slides stick. And you don't want it so slack that the air is escaping. have a Black & Decker cordless scrubbing brush which I found very useful for buffing these up afterwards. Right, we'll just buff them up with this brush. back in the chapel and put those on the table and vacuum them off. Right we're vacuuming the holes out just in case.
seems satisfactory. Right, I'll get a ladder and we'll take it upstairs. Right, I've taken the camcorder off the tripod and we're here on the top of the organ. And you can see I've put these three slides in. I have to dig the fourth one out of storage still and then clean it and, and check the black leading, etc. the same. So the back one, so you can see that these soundboards have got all these holes in it, one for each note. And this is the one without the slide. So this one's got the slide. And so by these slides moving, the holes open up to let the organ pipe sound when that stop is drawn. And that's why it's got to stop because it stops them off. So that next one, next one, and you've got dowels in the end, which put them into the open and closed position exactly. And so we've still got that one to do. So when we put the upper board on top of that, you'll see that when the slide is drawn, the holes will correspond, and those holes in the bottom will correspond with the holes in the top. So as I'm preparing the upper boards, I think this is the second one from the back. We've got the photographs of the job, and we can see from the photographs, just check there in the viewfinder, the way the shape of this goes, So we've got a rack pillar hole and it bulges out in that direction and conversely the other side we've got three pipe feet holes and it bulges out in that direction so we need to know that that is the base end. I mean theoretically this should be marked by us or by previous organ builders but can't always see the writing it could be a C, now I come to look at it there, because that's the C side and the right hand side is the C sharp side. So we'll go back upstairs and put this one in. I don't need to show you me screwing these in with every other screw just as a temporary measure, but that's what's happening. Now here's an interesting problem. A previous person black leading this has actually blocked these wind escape routes. These are to stop any leakage from one note running onto the next just by going underneath the, the sandwich of uh, the slide and the upper board and the, and the table top of the soundboard. So I, I could get the chisel out, but you know what? We can just get rid of that and then we'll vacuum it out. But that's not good. And those top notes are going to be more susceptible to running than the ones requiring more wind at the bottom. So that's what these grooves do. I've just got to check all these kind of things. We don't want to play one note and get another one, do we? So I'll just vacuum that up and the same some of these have happened. With these notes, you're not likely to have a problem because they require a lot more of an air supply. But nevertheless, it's, it's somewhat shoddy that that's happened. It still, it still has to be chiseled a particular way so it doesn't have runnings on the bit where there are no notes with it being a Tennessee no bottom octave stop. So we'll just scrape some of those off and I'll get the vacuum cleaner on it. thought you'd be interested in that. So the next thing I wanted was the upper board screws. We, we segregate upper board screws uh, between the grate and the swell because they can differ. We do a lot more segregation of screws than what I did on my apprenticeship with Groves. Um, we did segregate rack pillars, but not so much screws. So this box, now these are supposed to be meticulously labelled, but things can happen, can't they? 
So it says the, the organ number, which is DO4022, Louth Eastgate Union, July 2010, barcoded, great upper board screws. Then we get the next bin, which says nothing, but has similar screws. They're the great upper board screws. They are presumably the swell upper board screws. There's a hole in the bottom of that box, it's got damaged, so be careful with that. Then we've got swell rack pillars. We're going to want those. And they support between the upper boards and the rack boards. And the rack boards are leaning up against my workshop door, which I'll show you in a moment. Then we've got three. If I can get the camera around. We've got three um, fast food tubs. That says shutters, as in swell shutters. That says nothing. And that says swell box. So when we come to put the swell box together, we know they're the screws. So they're the rack boards which support the organ pipes, um, which I have cleaned ready. So there we are, that's the upper boards on with just a dozen screws. So what we've just made sure, this uh, camera's handheld, is that the slides for the stops are moving in and out okay. So next we're going to deal with the rack pillars. So I'll just uh, find the box out and clean them off. Right, I've just cleaned all but three of the swell rack pillars. So that's what we've got. Oops, knocks the tripod. And the hand turned. They should all be an equal size, but they never are when I make them. So um, I've kept three back because they've either had woodworm or they've currently got woodworm, so I need to treat those just in case. So we'll pop those upstairs and I'll show you how it goes. I'm just going to put six in because all we're doing is testing this because I'm going to leave the upper boards on if there's no malfunction, but I will need to take the rack pillars and the rack boards out um, and the pipes I'm going to put in, they'll have to come out before we can move further on with the organs. It's just to prove whether the valves are set right. So there you are, that's six rack pillars in the upper board, which is the one we're working on. It's the second stop in that we're going to be playing with. It's the um, four foot on this organ. So that is the rack board on. So it's, it's stood off by those pillars, with the rack pillars. And I can feel One, two, you can feel at least the seventh note with air coming out of it, which is bad news. Anyway, we're going to put those, we're going to clean those organ pipes. I'm going to just dry clean them for now. That sounds like going to the dry cleaners, doesn't it? And then we'll do a wet clean in sodium hydroxide when I put them in properly. Well, in fact, we're not going to clean the pipes today and we'll just come on to Saturday morning. So I'm going to get this video out. Uh, Mr. Chippy's away for the weekend. The organ pipes I thought were the four foot flute. Uh, sorry, this, whatever it is, <laughs> it could be a flute. Um, let's just look at the specification. I thought there were some metal funny shaped things like a bit of a bell on them. And uh, that doesn't seem to be the case because the notes I've got from the National Pipe Organ Register say spitz flute tapered wooden pipes. So, don't know whether that's going to be in focus. Spitz flute, four foot tapered wooden pipes. That's what I'm putting in. So, the back set of pipes is the Lieblick Bordon 16. 
and that will be the first which is really going in and then the Eigen principle which means violin diapason in uh, more English speak the spitz flute and then there's an oboe so that's the order they go in from back to front and we're putting that four foot one in because they're more likely to what we call whimper when they're getting a bit of air leaking through the air valves the pallets they're more likely to whimper we've probably got about eight whimpering but there's various things that can be wrong and most of them can be rectified without having to take the thing apart again um, so anyway we're going to see what happens when we do put those pipes in and that's going to be next week so I need Mr Chippy because the pipe crates have got two ranks of pipes two sets of pipes in each crate and I simply can't move them on my own and uh, as I say the one I thought it was it isn't so there we go so this is the end of part whichever and uh, we'll do another one for next week so we're not, you can actually see us getting somewhere the fact we've now got the the blower's not got the leather around it so it's the, the uh, flexible hose is, is leaking of course it is and we've only got three out of eight screws on that uh, trunking over there um, which goes from the bellows up to the south so of course that's leaking but we have got the pressure there is enough pressure to have that up to its normal working pressure and pressure brings me to another point we've not got all the weights on the bellows at the moment we're not that many short uh, some of them are still being painted and I've been doing other things but we don't know what the pressure is of this organ and we're going to be sending the oboe to the pipe makers in Leeds we use booths of Leeds um, and they're going to be revoicing the oboe because they're always temperamental to tune and what you don't want is to be putting an organ in in this situation and the oboe is out of tune every five minutes so it's going to go back to the pipe makers in Leeds and they're going to be remaking that that's what they do they're pipe makers I'm an organ builder I don't touch organ pipes a bit like car makers don't normally make the alternator so they're going, so they're going about, I need to know the pressure to tell them. Now, when we took this organ out, when I inspected it, I, there was power on it and I was able to, to play it. And yeah, yeah, well, it was fine. And the video is on the uh, internet. But when we came to take it out, they'd uh, had the power removed. So we've no, we weren't able to do a pressure test. So uh, we don't know what the pressure is and we need to know that for the pipe makers. And um, we, we, we also need to have a set of pipes made for the bottom keyboard which we're nowhere near but the pipe makers told me there's a two year waiting list for new ranks of pipes so we cut although we're going to know the pressure next week we're not going to know uh, the scale of the pipes that we're going to be wanting so that's something and it really doesn't matter it's going to be playable even if it's not finished for two years so that's where we're going to leave it thanks for watching hope you're learning something